Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for this first and likely only edition of Dr. Matt Guitar Hack. My name's Dave and I've been playing the electric guitar on and off since the 1980s. If you're new to guitar or if you have years of experience, you probably know firsthand the hobby or profession can be very expensive. This brings up a very important question. How can you save money? I'm gonna share with you 13 ideas, a baker's dozen if you will, in this video. Here we go. The first thing I would recommend is that you know what type of music you're interested in. No two guitars are alike, and some are specifically made for certain types of music. For instance, the Telecaster is often used in country music. A jazz master is common for, you guessed it, jazz. A super strat, or a super shredder, is used for rock music. And a Schecter or ESP is often used for metal. Knowing your genre can help you purchase the right guitar for you. The same goes with amps. A Fender Twin amp is probably something a country musician or a jazz artist would prefer. A Marshall or an EBH 5150 are used for rock. Punk artists might like an orange amp. A Mesa Boogie amp might be more appropriate for metal. Of course, there are some options that have a lot of flexibility. A Fender Stratocaster or a Gibson Les Paul can be used for a wide variety of genres. And amps like a Fender Champion or a Marshall DSL-40 can be used for many styles of music. The important thing is to know what type of music you prefer, so get the right gear from the get-go. A second idea is to try the gear before you purchase it. Go to Guitar Center or some other store and experiment with guitars and amps to find the right one for you. The nature of each instrument is different, and you might find that one just won't work or that another is perfect for what you want. A third way to save money is to talk to friends and other musicians to gather their recommendations. If you get the right thing the first time, you won't have to purchase something else later on down the road. A fourth way to save money is to purchase used gear. You can find used gear on Reverb, Facebook Marketplace, and other local websites. You could save one quarter to one half of the price of gear if you will purchase it used versus new. Of course, the gear could be banged up and it might need some work, but some used gear is in fantastic shape and it will save you money. There is a caveat to used gear I want to mention. You can purchase used gear and upgrade it with new tuners, wiring, or pickups. This could conceivably save you some money, but you will need to price out the upgrades and the installation versus purchasing a higher quality instrument the first time. Also, Upgrades could cost you more money in the long run if you don't do the modifications yourself or if you trade it or sell it. Keep in mind this fact, you are probably not going to get a return on your investment and in some cases, modification can devalue your guitar. A fifth idea to save money is to look for sales if you are purchasing new gear. The major stores, Guitar Center, Sweetwater, American Musical and others put things on sale frequently. There are guitar fests at Guitar Center during certain months, I believe in October and April, and there's almost always sales during the holidays, Valentine's Day, Easter, Memorial Day, Fourth of July, Labor Day. Your biggest sales, of course, are at Christmas time when you will get the best deal of the year. If you wait to purchase your gear, you can get a fantastic bargain during holiday seasons. Sixth, Many of the major stores have coupons or special discounts. Search the internet for coupons. You can find them on occasion. Or sign up for a mailing list and retailers will send you an electronic coupon through your email. Another option is to look for demo gear. Companies like Sweetwater, American Musical, and Guitar Center will have special sections on their website that advertise equipment that has dings, dents, and other imperfections. If you can handle a few blemishes, you could save hundreds of dollars. Calling a sales associate is the seventh way to save money. Manufacturers and retail chains don't always advertise sell prices. If you call a sales associate directly on the 1-800 number, 
that is often advertised on the website, they might be willing to give you a deal that's not available on the website. If you take this approach, purchasing multiple things at once could help you get the best deal possible. An eighth recommendation is to ask for a price match. Retailers may not match the price on Amazon, but if a competitor has a price that's advertised, the retailer may be willing to match it. This doesn't always apply to coupons though, so be aware of this limitation. A different way to save money is to consider if you want to purchase pedals separately or a multi-effects unit. Pedals can cost anywhere from $40 or $50 all the way up to $400. The benefit of an individual pedal is often a better tone. However, sometimes pedals get noisy when you put them together, so keep that in mind. In contrast, purchasing a multi-effects platform could save you a lot of money. Some of these units, like a Boss GT1000 or a Helix, are more expensive than one or a few pedals but they are definitely cheaper than purchasing multiple pedals. The benefit of multi-effects platforms is the versatility. You can get an endless combination of effects, but sometimes the tones are not as pronounced as those in individual pedals, so you have to know the trade-offs. A different way to save money is to purchase certain types of amps. Combo amps might be cheaper than purchasing an amp head and the cabinet, or some amps already have built-in effects, and this could eliminate the need for pedals. Again, the tones may not be as clear or pronounced as an individual pedal or a multi-effects platform. Another suggestion to save money is to sell your gear on Reverb, Facebook Marketplace, or another local website. If you sell your gear to a major retailer or a mom-and-pop store, you might only get one-fourth to one-half of the value. In comparison, if you sell your gear yourself, you can get one half to three fourths of the value of the equipment. There's a trade off though, selling gear yourself could take longer than taking it to a store like Guitar Center. A final way to save money is to do basic maintenance and repairs yourself. It's not that hard to learn how to change strings or intonate your guitar. You can find many videos on YouTube which could save you a lot of money and setup costs. Of course, you need to be careful. For instance, if you tighten the neck on your guitar too much, you can break it. This will cost you a lot of money in the long run, assuming you can even fix the mistake that you've made. So you need to know the limits when it comes to maintenance, upgrades, and repairs. I just realized there's other ways to save money, but it doesn't really fit with my baker's dozen, if you will. For instance, you can find stores that offer free shipping, or you could do some reviews of gear on your YouTube channel and perhaps get some guitars, pedals, or amps for free in the process. Of course, this may not be possible for most of us, but it's an option to consider if you are better at making videos than I am. Well, I've taken a lot of your time. I hope this was helpful nonetheless. What recommendations do you have? I'm sure others would love to hear from you. Well, I've taken too much of your time Thanks for joining. I hope this video was helpful. If so, please give a like and welcome.